Here's our top story. KTAR News, 92.3 FM, Arizona's news station. Joining me in studio is Rachel Mitchell, the interim county attorney, um, and hopefully um, you're trying to make take away that word interim from, yes. from that label. Yes. Not the first time you've done this, but different circumstances. Yes, very different circumstances. So let's let's talk about the circumstances that you entered this office, a little bit of doubt, you know, law enforcement from the community. Is that relationship with law enforcement being repaired, and if so, how? Yeah, actually, that's one of my number one priorities is to improve the relationship with law enforcement. So we're in the process of setting up a summit, um, not with a huge agenda on my part other than to listen to their concerns, but also to talk about some ways that we can improve that relationship. And just to have that FaceTime, that was one of the concerns, was there was no communication. So there was a backlog of cases, and some of that is staffing. We understand that some of it is limited staffing, but is that, um, is that being handled in a better way? What are, is performance better? We are, I mean, it's a complex issue, and one of the things I have to look at is, like you said, staffing, because once we start charging cases, the, t- the clock starts ticking, and we need to make sure we have the prosecutors to prosecute those cases. So one of the things we're doing is we're starting a, a, an aggressive recruitment campaign. Um, the Board of Supervisors also approved a market adjustment to make us more competitive. And so we're reaching out to people and saying, come back and help us out so that we can address that. And I, I don't think people understand the disparity in income sometimes. And so for you to be able to get good quality attorneys, which you need to prosecute cases because you're going to be going up good quality defense attorneys. Right. You have to have good quality people. You have to pay them. Right. Exactly. And these are people who may have massive school debts. Um, they have may, they may be starting families. Families, um, and so we have to make it something where they can live with that salary. Are, are you, uh, I guess this is an easy question, but are you happy with the direction that the office is moving? Is it moving along as quickly as you had hoped or is it going slower? You know, I, I think it, I'm happy. I mean, this is day five of uh, being a county attorney and I uh, think it, we're getting a lot done. It's just a matter of, you know, getting all the pieces in place. But it's moving on at the pace that I would expect. So the team you have, the leadership there with the questions that were asked and you were a part of the questions that were asked of uh, previous <laughs> leadership, how has that leadership team been with you, or, uh, with you at the helm? You know, when the five division chiefs were working together to see what could be done about that, um, I mean, I had known these people for a long time, but I just, uh, my respect for them grew immensely. Uh, these are people with absolute integrity, which is the number one quality. And uh, they stepped up to the degree that they were able to as division chiefs, and they continue to do that. And so it is a great team to have. When um, when you look at changes being made in the office, the number one priority right now is what? The number one priority honestly, is to restore the trust of the community because the criminal justice system has to represent them and they have to feel confident in that. And so we have to make sure that they understand that we are being fair with everyone, appropriate, but holding people accountable at the same time. The the people as they are that have been long term employees in the office, I understand morale must have been tough for a while. What is how is it improving morale or what is the what path are you taking to improve morale in the office? You know, morale is improving already. Um, A number of people just turned out for the swearing in to show support. Um, I'm a known commodity in the office. I've been a supervisor there, and so I have the support of the office. Um, I'm also doing regular communications with them. I'm present, and they know I'm present. They know I'm working. They know I'm engaged, and that alone, I think, has really helped. Um. I know that you want to be able to look forward, but you have to acknowledge the past is still kind of hanging around. Yes. How long do you think? I mean, in your mind, is it a time frame or is it things that have to happen where the past is finally behind you and you're looking forward in this office? Yeah, I wouldn't give a time frame because, you know, it didn't happen overnight. It's not gonna, going to be fixed overnight. But there are definitely some things that we move forward with in terms of, like we talked about, recruiting, um, getting the backlog down. Um, that that I think will restore it. But it, it is going to be a process, not an event. Was there cooperation with the previous county attorney when she left and you coming in? Was there a time of transition where she helped the transition in the office? 
Um, I've worked more closely with the chief deputy to do that transition. Okay, so yeah. let's talk about um, just the campaign for a moment. Um, one of your opponents in the primary, Annie mm-hmm. Foster, mm-hmm. Um, stepped out of the race, and she did so because she said a qualified person needs to take over the office. You've been appointed and basically said it's in good hands and I don't need to be in this race, which we don't see very often politically. Mm-hmm. What did you think of that move, and did she talk to you about that move before she made it? You know, I had had a couple of conversations with Annie. Annie and I are friends. We've worked together for years uh, through my interactions with the governor's office. You know, for example, I I chair his Children's Justice Task Force. And, um, you know, it's surprising because it doesn't happen very often. But knowing Annie, it's not surprising at all because she's just a class act. And that's just who she is. Yeah, it's interesting because the governor doesn't normally make primary endorsements, but he did make the endorsement because he works so closely with her. Yes. And if you're going to run for an office, that's a pretty big endorsement to have. And for her to have that in her pocket, but still show the confidence in what's happened in the office, I thought, like you said, was a was a class act and a selfless thing we don't normally see in politics. Right. And, you know, it's great. I, I hope we can turn the corner. There's been so much um, anger uh, in politics. And I mean, she just set a great example. And I, I just think very highly of her. I always have. Uh, Before I let you go, we were talking before we went on the air about the Brett Kavanaugh hearings and your involvement in that. Yes. With that under your belt, what's happening now must be easier to deal with having experienced what I call a freak show in D.C. (laughs) My word, not yours, but having having experienced that has got to help in the stress of what you're doing now. You know, I I think it does because you you kind of know what's going to be coming at you. I think it's always easier to enter a a stressful situation knowing what's going to happen and um, kind of been there, done that, as the saying goes. I I don't think they'll be doing Saturday Night Live skits about the Maricopa County Attorney's Office, but you are someone that's had – you've been featured. I have. And, And you told me you liked it. I, I thought it was hysterical. The person who portrayed me, A.D. Bryant, is from Arizona, and uh, I would uh, love to meet her, but I thought it was very funny, yes. All right, last question on a serious note has to do with the DOJ investigation into Phoenix PD. Has mm-hmm. your office been involved in that at all? That Has the DOJ reached out to you, and, and where is that? So the DOJ did reach out to our office prior to me taking um, office as county attorney, and that was dealt with by the previous administration. I have not um, had contact with the DOJ since taking office last week. Well, I appreciate you coming in and speaking to the audience, audience this morning. And as you progress in this office, I would love to have you come in more and give us updates on how it's going, because I think you're right. Restoring the confidence in the community has got to be job one. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mike.